Hello all you gorgeous life sciences or biology students. Today's lessons are going to be on prep skills and I've divided it into a few different sections because it's a lot to take in. So this particular one is on hypothesis testing. So when you're doing a practical in class or maybe you're doing a prep exam, you will always be given some information and you'll always be given an aim in the experiment or the aim of the experiment. Now what is so important about the aim is you can deduce from that the hypothesis, the independent variable, the dependent variable. So you need to look at that aim and you need to dissect it and you need to be able to understand it so it will work for you yeah. for the entire practical. Okay, so now I've given three possible aims of experiments and we're going to use these aims to create a hypothesis and to work out what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. Now, of course, I can't do three total experiments, so you're going to have to use your imaginations a little bit. I will help you along the way, but hopefully it will all make quite a lot of sense. So let's look at the first aim. To determine which substances contain glucose. So you can be given three different solutions. Apple juice, lemon juice, and egg white. Okay, so there you have three different solutions in front of you and you need to work out which of these substances contain glucose. So the first thing you need to do is work out a hypothesis from this aim. Okay, so now a hypothesis, let's just go through exactly what this is. It is a statement that can be tested. So you, that you can either prove the statement as to being correct or you will disprove the statement as to being incorrect. So you now look at these three things and you say, okay, hold on, let me think which, one do I, which ones do I think contain glucose and which ones do I think don't contain glucose. Okay, so let's just say, for example, you think that apple juice definitely contains glucose and lemon juice, let's say lemon juice contains glucose and egg white does not contain glucose. So it doesn't have to be correct. It has to be what you think from your experiences and what you assume to be correct. And then you can test it and then either it will be correct or incorrect. Either way, it is fine because it is still a conclusion from your hypothesis. So because I think that apple juice, lemon juice both contain glucose and, they, and albumin or egg white does not, the hypothesis will then be apple juice and lemon juice contain glucose whereas egg white does not contain glucose. And this is where it gets a little bit complicated. How do I know if these contain glucose? Okay, I'm sure you have all learnt. There are two possible tests that you will do for, that you can do to test for glucose. So the one is called Benedict's. is failings A and B. So you either add Benedict's solution to the, um, to the, the substances or the solutions or you add failings A and B, then you heat it and if it goes a brick red colour or orangey or even a little bit browny, then you know it does contain glucose. Okay, so the hypothesis is something that we can test and then we're going to test it. Okay, so now let's look at independent and dependent variables. So quickly at just what they are. The independent variable is what the, the scientist is actually manipulating, what you as an experimenter are doing. What are you changing? What are you varying in this experiment? Are you varying the fact that it contains glucose or are you varying the substances? What are you putting in that's different? You can't change the glucose concentration, but you can change the substance. So it would be the apple juice, the lemon juice, and the egg white, because that is what you are putting in, the variables that you are putting into the experiment. So that would be the independent variable, it's what you manipulate. And then looking at the result or the outcome of the experiment, what are you looking for? Okay, this would be whether they contain glucose or not. Okay, so the, if there is glucose depends on which solution it is and that becomes your dependent variable. Now it does get a bit more complicated again because you are testing for glucose using Benedict's. Now Benedict's or Benedict's or failings. It will go brick red if there is glucose. 
okay so how do I know that there is glucose I only know if there's glucose if there's a positive Benedict or positive failings test so you need to think about that and you need to be careful not to put the result of the experiment in the place of the dependent variable and that is why the aim is so important because the aim will always relate the independent variable and the dependent variable let's look at it again to determine which substances contain glucose the independent variable is the substances and you must give the examples that you're doing don't just say the substances because it can be any substances we are using three substances in this experiment and then the dependent what depends on the substance whether they contain glucose or not and that is obviously that is seen by a change in the color of the benedicts or of the failings so that is how you would explain the, that's how you explain the dependent the dependent is whether they can whether they contain glucose or not and that is seen by a positive change or negative change or, or, or no change in the test with benedicts or failings okay now moving on to the next one to see the effect sunlight has on the rate of photosynthesis okay so again now it's another word this one was to determine now it's to see the other they could say to prove also is another option okay how what is the effect of sunlight on the rate of photosynthesis now if you want to see if photosynthesis has occurred you can test for starch okay you would use iodine and you can test for starch because remember there are two products of photosynthesis glucose which is then stored as starch and oxygen now another way to determine the, how fast photosynthesis uh, will occur is to look at how many bubbles of oxygen gas are produced per minute because we are looking at rate okay we're looking here at rate so if you could determine the number of bubbles that um, or the number of bubbles will tell you how fast photosynthesis has occurred so let's try and work out how to create a hypothesis over here right so it's something that can be proved or disproved so maybe we could say something along the lines of an increase in sunlight or the more sunlight there is the faster the rate of photosynthesis you see so what you can do is you can increase the amount of sunlight and then you can see how many bubbles are produced per minute so let's now from that hypothesis or that aim let's work out the independent and the dependent what here are you going to be changing you are going to be changing the sunlight or the intensity of the sunlight more likely and then you want to see or what you're going to measure is how quickly photosynthesis occurs the rate of photosynthesis now remember you are measuring the rate of photosynthesis by bubble production because it's making bubbles of oxygen so you can measure it that is how you are measuring it it doesn't mean that the bubbles are your dependent variable the rate of photosynthesis because that is your aim of your experiment the bubble the, the bubbles are showing you the dependent variable but they are the results please be very careful not to confuse those two okay and now we go on to the last one this is a little bit unusual and it's not very common in um, in the practicals but I have seen it before and I think you must think about this also you don't always have to prove something sometimes you just get to demonstrate or to show that something is happening so let's look at this one this says to demonstrate that albumin which is egg white and milk contain protein so how do you do that okay how do you take that and make it a hypothesis okay the question you have to ask yourself the question do you think albumin contains protein do you think milk contains protein and from that you can then create the hypothesis so I think both of them contain protein so my hypothesis would be albumin and milk contain protein so I'm sure you've also done a protein test it's called the biorate test okay and how do you know this protein when you do the biorate test and you heat it it turns a purple color and the purple indicates the presence of protein so let's again look at the independent and the dependent variable so to demonstrate that albumin and milk contain protein what are you varying what are you changing well I would say the, the different sources or the different substances so that would be the albumin and the milk and then what is the dependent variable what are you looking for what is going to be dependent on whether it's albumin or milk and that would be the protein the presence of protein 
would be your dependent variable because it depends on the substance that you are testing, the albumin and the milk. Okay. And how do you know that there's protein? You'll have to see the color change. So if I had to ask you what the dependent variable is, you can't tell me the color change and it goes purple with a bio-red test because that's the result. It's not the dependent variable. You may say the dependent variable is the presence of protein in albumin and milk as seen by the purple color change when a bio-red test is done. Okay, I hope I have helped clarify the difference between the independent and dependent variable. I hope I made hypotheses clearer to you, how it's a statement that you think is, is to be true, that you can then test and then prove it or disprove it. Okay, and I also have given you a few examples of food tests, which are always important to know. And good luck. I hope it all goes well.